show Five Star Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Michael. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly, and yes, it's the new year with a lot, a lot of transfer rumors, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, Atlanta United are making moves, and uh, I mean, some that maybe some fans aren't loving, but we will get into all of it. Uh, but before we get too deep into all of that, uh, shouts out to our Patreon members, uh, our pledges, Gavin Marshall, Jordan Beck, Nal Faruqi, Andrew Wawicki, and Chris James. Much love to you all. But uh, yeah, as well, uh, you know, we have talked about uh, us being on the train to uh, 10,000 subs. Help your brothers out with that and uh yeah definitely some fun stuff happening in the future uh if you are a subscriber so uh yes let's get into the news and that's what we're gonna do this episode because there's so much to go through but first up on the docket is caleb wiley and tiago almada they both were called up to their respective national teams uh caleb wiley uh, playing a part into the uh, the senior team's national team, that is quite a big deal. Uh, you know whether he actually is going to get picked or not. Uh, that's going to be another thing. I mean, but uh, to be part of that training camp is huge. Uh, of course, Almada has been training with Argentina uh, pretty much the entire off season. So uh, you know that's. Uh, I think he's keeping that fitness. It's good. But uh, Caleb Wiley, what are your thoughts on uh, him making that training camp with the U.S. men's national team? It's to be expected, and it should happen. Um, it would be bizarre to me when you have a basically all MLS training camp uh, not have Caleb Wiley. That would be insane to me. So, yeah, he's definitely a, uh, you know, a sure choice for that, and I'm glad to see him do that. Um, it'll help him, you know, add to his resume when it comes to international and national training camps and getting to knowing people in that world better, um, just exploring the networking, getting more his footing there, and hopefully he continues to do it more often. Um, I'd like to see him get more games. The kid is great. I want to see him to be the next big thing, especially in the national team. So um, yeah, it's just uh, it's a good news overall. Um, and I'm excited to see him get some bigger call ups in the future. Yes, indeed. I mean, it is, uh, yeah, well deserved for him. I think there is an omission a little bit uh, in terms of Brooks Lennon, who unfortunately yeah. has not uh, been called up to the national team in quite some time. Uh, you know, I mean, four goals, ten assists. I mean, he he was probably the the best outside back uh, in the league, uh, at least offensively. So it's definitely a little bit perplexing that he didn't even get a look. But uh, I think maybe the question marks around his defense, possibly. But I think he's improved really, really tremendously uh, since he first arrived. So it's odd. It's definitely odd that uh, you know he's not playing a part. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, I think maybe the good thing is that we'll have him for, you know, the times that we're short with uh, players that, you know, go away on international duty. So maybe it's not the worst thing selfishly as a fan, but uh, for himself, you know, definitely probably a little bit sad. But uh, but yeah, moving on into the rumors and news. So, uh, yeah, last week there were rumors about Franco Ibarra. Uh, according to German Garcia Grova, that Rosario Central, a Argentinian side, were uh, in advanced negotiations to bring him in on a one-year loan. Well, he took his medical last Friday, and uh, yeah, he was announced as a Rosario Central player for a one-year loan. And uh, yeah, you know that definitely gets a bar off the books for LA United under the U22 rule, uh, the DP U22 rule. But uh, yeah, definitely he had a pretty acrimonious exit, unfortunately, uh, going uh, from us to what he called the worst team in the league in Toronto. So yeah, you know, uh, it was never really in the cards for him to probably stay. Uh, it, yeah, the writing was 
probably on the wall. But uh, yeah, one-year loan to Rosario Central. A uh, pretty decent side in Argentina. I believe they're in the top four, at least uh, as of checking last week. So yeah, in terms of Abara to that, uh, that club, uh, do you think this is a good move for not only him, but for the club? Yeah, I think overall it's good on both sides. He gets to go to a club he's probably a little familiar with back in Argentina. Um, you know, it seems like a safe landing spot. It seems like an area where he can also improve his game and then launch from there to go up if, you know, he gets better, does better. Um, yeah. I think for us, it's a good bit of business because, um, like you said, we get him off the books. It didn't end perfectly well with him and unfortunately it's probably just better to try and end things and start it up with a new player in that position um but you know it's i, I wish things could have done been done better they weren't um you know say what you want for all the kind of backdoor stuff that you know people were saying happened with this um different difficulties with the front office and with him and you know the the whole thing with edwin mascara you know was did uh boca overstack us and gamble on the u22 initiative i've like you know forget all that at this point let's just move on because we're in a better spot with him moving there and he's in a better spot by going there because he's not on toronto anymore which he was right was the worst team in the league and they probably have to show a lot this year to say that they've made a lot of improvements. And so I, I wouldn't want to be there to find out. I'd rather just get out of there, um, you know, and then get out of the, uh, coming back to us because that was like, you know, a bit of a, a hot pot he was in. So I think it's just better overall for him to go down there. Right. And uh, yeah, you kind of alluded to the U22 stuff. Uh, I mean, another player uh, that is on his way out, apparently, anyway, uh, is Santiago Sosa and uh, Racing Club. Uh, they are continuing negotiations, apparently. Uh, and uh, there is a little bit of a holdup because LA United are seeking a uh, fee for the loan. Uh, but there apparently is going to be optimism that uh, it will be resolved in the uh, in maybe sometime in the near future. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely interesting that both of these are loans. Uh, I mean, there is a uh, a four million reported uh, fee that we can get for an uh, option to buy uh, in terms of from Ross and Klub. So if they like what they see from Sosa, they can purchase him for four million. Uh, yeah, hopefully he balls out because, yeah, that's what we absolutely need uh, a little bit to a degree. Uh, luckily, we don't really have to deal with fan financial fair play. So, uh, you know, that's not really a, a massive issue in terms of we have to get a fee in or anything like that. Uh, but, yeah, it is interesting that both players that are U22 players exit potentially on loans and uh yeah i mean if we can get a fee that definitely makes the front office look a little bit better but if it's not mm, you know like wh what do you think like loans for these guys uh would you have preferred you know if we can obviously uh to have gotten a transfer fee and sell them instead yeah i would have preferred that but um because i think their time at the club here is done so you know, the loan, the idea that they're coming back, I just don't see that really happening. Um, so hopefully that can turn into some kind of long term arrangement. But if not, you know, we'll figure it out. You know, I have faith that they'll do that. Um, you know, Santiago, we put a decent amount of an investment in. Um, he had a bright future. Um, I still think he has some potential, perhaps not here. We'll see if he can still, add, you know, tap into that or if. I don't know, whatever happened here in Atlanta, you know, has some kind of knock-on effect for his future. I have no idea if people talk about getting COVID and injuries and things like that. And yeah. he just never seemed to be the same, but you know, um, yeah, with like, it's with the view 22 players, it, it's not the worst thing in the world to go on and experiment with, you know, grab these types of players and experiment with them as a bit of a gamble. You don't know exactly how they'll develop and how they'll play. Um, and when you're doing that with younger players, it's not the worst thing in the world if they don't pan out. Um, it kind of hurt us a little bit more significantly with considering the 
the places we put the U22s in, which was along the spine of the club, um, and they ended up being starters. Which, I mean, I guess you would, considering how much you, like I said, the investment we put into them. Um, but having two players underperforming and, you know, also having Rosetto on there, who was underperforming, right along the spine, it really hurt us in the midfield big time. Um, so that experiment didn't quite work. So we moved on from it. And hopefully now we have, you know, some bigger name players, experienced veterans that can come in and take some of those spots and now if we want to experiment maybe with one i'd be okay with that mm -hmm. um but two i think was clearly too many because yep. if they both don't do well that's a massive hole in your midfield and you'll be seeing seasons like we had in the last you know two or three seasons so right exactly and that's really what it is is uh you know you, you hit the nail on the head that uh you would have liked it to see it not be in those positions and uh maybe you know along maybe more of the outside which yeah we did with uh edwin mosquera but uh it is that like you have two guys that are pretty much the same age and that's why you had to bring in the likes of maybe an ozzy alonzo who uh yeah we uh are gonna talk about right now who basically had to retire <laughs> maybe you know, maybe that's a harsh way, but uh, he, yeah, he was very much, uh, in terms of, yeah, the, the legs underneath him, he just got injured and just really couldn't recover uh, well enough to really help us when we really, I think, needed him, um, you know, in terms of uh, what he was going to bring, because when he played, I thought he was actually doing quite well and, you know, brought that experience that we needed, but he did announce his retirement. He uh, announced it on social media. Uh, he said, quote, reflecting on the journey, grateful for every step. Fue un lindo camino. Uh, and he said, thank you very much. Muchas gracias to all the clubs that he was a part of, uh, including FC Panar del Rio, uh, Charleston Battery, Sounders, of course. Minnesota United and us, but yeah, it is, uh, you know, we, we didn't really get the best of Ozzy Alonso, uh, you know, the, uh, it is kind of a bummer. Four games in, man. Four yeah. games in. Yeah. He and goes down with ACL. Like. Right. And, <sighs> you know, it's, a. Uh, it makes you wonder about some of the, you know, the kind of non-contact injuries that we have, uh, gotten throughout the years. Um, uh, you know, people pontificate about the turf. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but uh, maybe it's a factor for one of the other outgoing players that, uh, you know, we had on the team. We will talk about him later. But uh, Ozzy Alonso, salute to a great career. All accounts that he's a great person. And really, uh, Santiago Sosa and Franco Ibarra as well. I mean, glowing reviews of them as people. And so uh, definitely, you know, it's, uh, it's sad to see them go in that sense. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, wish them all the best. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, any other thoughts on Ozzy Alonso? Um, no, I don't want to mirror pretty much what you said. I mean, the guy's an MLS legend. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best from his position um, that played in this league. Uh, he's, you know, legendary, not only, you know, um, in the league itself, but, you know, he's been known throughout. He's, he's a great player. Um, I, uh, like you said, it's very sad we didn't get to see the best that, uh, you know, that he had to offer, specifically like when he was in Seattle. I'm not sure how he did in Minnesota. I'm, I believe, I'm Jeez. tempted to think it wasn't that good um, because of, you know, just he was getting up there in age already and Minnesota wasn't doing that good. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Seattle was really his, uh, his time. And so we didn't really quite get him at the right time. And unfortunately, the worst possible scenario happened with him. Um, immediately after four games, an ACL tear puts him out the rest of the season and then makes a very careful recovery by then starting in like the twos in the next season and then eventually coming to the first team for a handful of shows to try and close things out. And unfortunately, it just literally wasn't the same. It's smart that we would probably have to have moved on with him if he didn't retire. It's just, it just makes sense. For him to go um i mean with that injury that puts a lot of people out of their career even at a much younger age so i don't fault him at all for wanting to go and do that 
um, perfectly acceptable. You know, he's had a great career. So, you know, hats off to him. Thanks for his time here. I wish it could have gone better. It just, it's like, what could have been? It just really stinks. And then I think this is also a good segue into talking about a new player that we have officially signed yes. in Dax McCarty, who oh, also is an older player. Uh -huh. And a lot of people on social media are looking at this as possibly resulting in the same kind of um you know thing that we could be looking at that we saw with ozzy alonzo this guy comes in everyone's like okay he brings the depth the experience the veteran leadership and then immediately gets injured again well i mean i don't think the likelihood of that is very high um i don't think like dax is going to go down in game four like ozzy did that would be unbelievably bad luck i would like to think atlanta doesn't have that bad of luck that would be insane but i mean you still have to calculate you know what is the probability of an older player in that type of position going down um and i think it's significant so they're taking a bit of a gamble dax seems to be able to keep up and not get injured very often i think that that's pretty good that's a good sign but you never know i mean this is a tough position to play in an mls very physical league and it's a physical position he'll be manning so he's gonna I and mean, we know dax is a smart player cerebral he can move the ball in such a way where he won't have to hopefully you know get stuck in with so many tackles like a bulldog like ibarra did or something like that but it's still going to be demanding and it's worrying to see someone of that age in that position playing for us but i have to remind everyone he's going to be a depth piece he's not going to be starting every game he's probably not going to be you know a part of every game so i don't think we have to be too worried um granted i the other guy who takes that position if he gets injured then yeah i think we have to be worried because you ask this guy to play you know more than i don't know like more than like 10 starts in the season i think you might have to start looking at this guy's going to get injured and it's going to be bad and then we're going to have like another season of oh my goodness these injuries are starting to mount up again so hopefully that's not the case knock on wood but i mean it's it Atlanta United invites this type of conversation and this possible criticism when they grab older players like this, which, you know, granted, you have the salary cap, you have to work within certain parameters. Dax McCarty comes in pretty cheap and fulfills a lot of the things that we were requiring. Um, you know, I talk about pylon players a lot. This guy is one of them, 100%. You know, he reminds me of like Michael Parkhurst a little bit, I'll buy it in a different position. Um, so, you know, it's... Having this player, I think, is necessary, and it's a good bit of business, too, in, in terms of the salary cap. It's just, again, they invite a little bit of nervy criticism when you have a player of that age. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, to, to speak about it officially uh, in that sense of, uh, so he's signed as a free agent, uh, probably on kind of a more veteran minimum type of uh, salary, and uh, yeah, signed through 2024 uh, with an option for 2025 uh, 36 years old he spent the last four seasons with nashville so yeah a very good team that was making playoffs uh, and yeah essentially uh, he's had 466 mls regular season appearances so yeah he's got a lot of experience under his belt uh yeah two supporter shields yeah he's a winner he's uh, a player that will bring that professionalism to uh kind of this side that really needs it, I think. Uh, yeah, you know, you need somebody that can, uh, you know, really mentor the, the players, tell them where they need to be. Uh, you know, there's, I think the, the leaders in outfield have been lacking, unfortunately, uh, the past three or four years. And that's kind of uh, somebody that, that's what the, the role that he really fulfills here is that Ozzy Alonso role to a degree that we maybe were wanting, like you were alluding to. And uh, yeah, apparently, uh, you know, he, according to all the press conference uh, quotes and all that, uh, yeah, he was very excited to join LA United. Uh, he wanted to join a team that had a chance to win MLS Cup, and he thinks that this club is, uh, and the squad is one of the most talented in the league and has the capability of doing so. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, speaks his mind. Uh, he said, quote, I can't wait to show the LA United fans what I'm all about. I don't think many of them probably watched too many Nashville games last year. Maybe they just see the age and think this guy stinks or whatever. 
That's great. I love proving people wrong. Uh, that's awesome. I, I love that uh, kind of ethos. And uh, yeah, really, uh, I think we'll, we'll prove uh, to be something that is what's needed, probably. And, uh, you know, it's it's a club that that has a chip on its shoulder. Like they need to, <laughs> they need to show the fans. They need to show the league that uh, you know they can't, uh, they can't be also rans that we basically have been the past few seasons. We, uh, you know, we have torn apart basically a championship side, and I think this is a good step in the direction of filling in those depth pieces, a la a Jeff Lorinowitz a la a Michael Parker, like you were mentioning, uh, with MLS veterans that, you know, can show the guys that maybe are coming outside of the league uh, how it's done in this league. Because, yeah, you know, the away days are brutal. Like, we we couldn't win, <laughs> basically, on the road. Like, that's that's how you, you figure out how to win is with players that have, you know, played in this league and will let you know, hey, you know, Maybe those uh, those nights uh, that you uh, you know the players that are staying up until like three four a.m. because uh, they're playing EAFC like hey you know you probably shouldn't do that uh, get some rest <laughs> you know those marathons lights maybe... out at nine o'clock let's exactly, go exactly <laughs> exactly you, you need those taskmasters a little bit uh, and you know definitely this seems like a guy that can help us in that regard. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I get this move from the front office. I, I know that a lot of fans were like, okay, what? <laughs> but I think it's also, you know, if they were able to bring in who the next person that we we're about to talk about first and then bring him in, then it would have probably yeah. made more sense. But alas, you can't really <laughs> plan out your transfer window exactly like a script. And, uh, but uh, yes, that person is Bartos Slish. Uh, yeah, per Sky reports, uh, Lecce, they're having difficulty uh, in their uh, their high money demands, uh, at least Legia Warsaw's high money demands, uh, which is a good thing for LA United. Uh, and uh, apparently, though, uh, the Legia Warsaw sporting director, Jacek Zielinski, uh, he said, quote, I reject offers for him at the level of two and a half euros, uh, two and a half million euros, rather. And the fact that he would later leave for a free or a, uh, for symbolic money would pay off in the form of trophies and successes. This is obviously translated a little bit, so uh, bear with me here on the, uh, yeah, it doesn't probably uh, spell out maybe the most uh, sense. But, uh, but he did say also as well, the priority is to win trophies, but I do not rule out any option. Financially, we have seriously improved. We are out of trouble. We are in a situation where we don't have to sell anyone. Sports-wise, we would definitely like to keep Schliz. His contract expires in a year. So, yeah, definitely, you know, some posturing in the media by the sporting director to possibly get more. And according yeah. to that rumor, uh, it possibly is. Uh, so, Tomas... Uh, Vladrsik, uh, I'm butchering that. It's uh, that's that's my best uh, uh, pronunciation for the moment, anyway. But uh, yeah, he mentioned that Bartos Slish, he's close to signing for LA United, uh, and that was on Wednesday, January 10th. Uh, an agreement apparently has been reached between Legia Warsaw on the transfer fee, and it might amount to three and a half million. Dollars, so, uh, and that would roughly be about uh, probably the three million, and so three million euros anyway. Uh, so you know, definitely, you know, it's a it's a good bit of money in terms of MLS anyway, and uh, you know, I think he'd still be probably a high TAM player, but yeah, you think good move, uh, good money move? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's interesting that the uh, Atlanta, I think, tried to come in with a low ball. And you know Warsaw played their their cards. Um, you know it's always interesting to be like you know what is true and what is just trying to negotiate, right? It's like uh, I don't know is Warsaw's financial books in a good state? Who I don't know that. Um, it could be that they're not, and he's just saying that they are in order to 
you know, remove what some other team might see as, you know, an incentive for them to sell a player. Be like, no, we don't have an incentive. It's not there. We're, we're doing fine. So, no, we don't want to part with this guy. We don't have that lever you can pull. Um, so, you know, that jacks up the price. It seems like Land United really had their sights set on him because they bit. Um, or it seems so. And so, with 3.5 that's a significant more than what was around the two that they started with so 1.5 more i think his market value on transformer is like 6 million which is you know over 2022 to like around now it, it jumped up quite a bit <laughs> like four million dollars in his market value um so it seems like a good bit of business he seems like the real deal he seems like a really good player for his position um and i mean gosh we need that kind of player i was hoping to go for a dp in this spot but this guy seems like he can at least be mls quality if not better a little bit better um is he an elite midfielder in mls i don't know yet i don't uh if he's not dp it's hard to say um you know whether or not he'll be in the running for that but i really hope he will be i really hope that this guy really comes in here and puts his foot down and everyone goes okay this guy can boss a midfield i hopefully he can be that panacea in the midfield for us that i've been calling for for so long granted he's not a dp so we'll see how that shakes out um but yeah overall i'm happy with this everyone's been wanting a signing like this to come down the pipe all off season um and yeah the order in which they release this is you know unfortunate to dex is you know uh i you know it, it's not his fault he was talked about first and everyone's like well where's our actual player going to be there as if they thought that this dax would be like starting you know 32 games or whatever it is and i'm like no no no, no, no that's not the case so um hopefully he comes in and hopefully he puts a stamp on the league and i'm really looking forward to seeing how good he is um and how he adapts to our system and how he plays with us and how he pairs with tristan and you know fortune and you know whoever else he has to go with um and i want to see his personality how it works in the locker room with like gg and almada and things like that um you know if he's I mean, he's got to be a high flying forward thinking forward progressive player um because that's the way we play so you get the ball, you go, and you open up space with smart slicing, dissecting passes that opens up the other team. Um, yeah, you have defensive responsibilities. Get He looks athletic enough to get back and help. Um, and obviously he's gonna be one of the last lines of defense, but he still looks like he can get back. He's athletic. I want him up high. I want everyone up high. I want this team to be scoring and suffocating other teams. And he looks like the part. He looks like he'll be able to help with that. Um, whereas some of our sixes in the past, um, and eights and, you know, other players just had trouble a little bit with that. So I'm hoping this is a panacea, um, optimistic, happy about it. And like you said, the business seems per, per, pretty good too. Um, as long as he's not a DP, because I think that would be a mistake to have him be an accounting DP. So I think if they give him a long enough contract um you know it'll span out over time and it won't hit that threshold right and yeah maybe it is where he is bought down um because well yeah at the moment uh you know saba lapsenice he is uh still a dp and so if he is brought in maybe uh yeah there is uh, some accounting like you're saying to be done in order to fit him into uh, the roster but uh at that fee i think he will be okay uh it will be uh, I think manageable, but uh, yeah, definitely a player that's, uh, you know, he would be, I think at this point, probably the fourth midfielder that would uh, be in our midfield. So uh, we definitely need a lot more. We probably need at least two more uh, to at least uh, survive the entire season as yeah, we definitely used every single player that we had as a midfielder last season, but, uh, but yeah. And so, uh, let's get into some defenders, or at least a defender, uh, that has been rumored. Uh, well, he was drafted in the re-entry draft, and according to the AJC, uh, he has been signed by the club. Uh, he had about a week, essentially, to sign after the re-entry. Uh, he hasn't been announced, so yeah, definitely still a rumor. Uh, we don't know if 
uh, yeah, Williams will be announced soon, but I imagine it's probably, uh, you know, on those, like, good feels times where if we, uh, if we need some news, there he is. Boom. You know, so probably and maybe a Friday news dump or something. So uh, we, we shall see. But, uh, yeah, another defender in uh, the one that's definitely uh, is a replacement for an outgoing one, Stian Gregerson. He uh, apparently uh, has been spotted in Atlanta uh, that uh, he's going to be signing a four-year contract. It's a $2 million transfer fee. Bordeaux, his uh, previous club, will retain a 10% sell-on fee, according to L'Equipe. Uh Tom Bogert, he also mentioned that, yeah, he's in Atlanta completing his medical. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, basically that's, uh, you know, the the fee, you know, maybe 1.8 to 2 million, but yeah, I mean, really not too high in the grand scheme of all that. Uh, definitely seems like another high TAM player, but uh, yeah, a player that has a lot of attributes. His height, 6'4, uh, his pace, pretty decent for a center back, and yeah, definitely some of that European pedigree playing in League 2 and League 1. So yeah, what do you think uh, if uh, you know his, uh, you know if his if his signing becomes imminent? Yeah, um, I mean, I believe if I recall, this guy, I think he captained Bordeaux at least at one point, um, and he had his fans of Bordeaux being a bit up in arms with him leaving um, and upset. So that's a good sign for us. You want that to be the case, you know? You want the fans, uh, you know, like how when we departed ways with Miggy, we went to Newcastle's fan base and said, you know, take good care of this boy, <laughs> our special boy. So uh, hopefully that's something similar that's happening here. Um, you know, he's got big shoes to fill. Miles is an incredible defender and one of the better ones in MLS. Um, and so if he can give us what Miles was able to do at the minimum, We'll be fine, I think. Um, and I'm hoping that he can probably do more. Um, so, wh whereas Miles would have asked for more money and like a DP or something like that, I think it was wise for us to go in a different direction. And this guy won't be asking for that. And if he can be at least as good, that's fine by me. Granted, we are missing like captain material in Miles. We're missing leadership and history with the club with Miles. Um, but this is a new era. This is the Garth era, this is the Lagerway era. And now we have a new team. I mean, the last refuse, the last, uh, um, you know, uh, vestiges of the former team now lies in Braguzan. We'll probably be gone in a year or so. So like, it is a full, almost fully, completely, and for all intents and purposes, I believe it is just the Garth Lagerway era now. And everyone is going to be new and there's going to be new higher expectations again for winning and championships and i'm hoping and i'm thinking this guy gregerson looks like he might be able to help us with that goal yeah and uh, as well he's a player that has eight caps for norway he's 28 i mean yeah you know best friends center. of erling holland of course obviously yeah, right. that's the main reason why yeah, and uh, <laughs> Martin Ordegar. But, uh, yeah. Of Even course, though of Norway course. somehow is a terrible national team, but. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's just they're top heavy. And I think this is probably, it shows that, uh, you know, he, if he was part of those teams, then, yeah, you know, him dropping down to League uh like that's, uh, you know, maybe it's the level, unfortunately. But um, either way, though, I think Gregerson. Uh, at his age, at his ability, uh, I think that's something that uh, I think will suit this league and our club. Uh, and yeah, you know, with that experience, uh, I think it's going to be something that uh, will be uh, sorely needed because of the exit of uh, the aforementioned Miles Robinson, which we will talk about in a second. But before that, let's talk about uh, the... Uh, rumored fee that LA United want for Thiago Almada. That's according to Tom Bogert of The Athletic. They purportedly want to uh, only uh, at least $30 million for Thiago Almada, and, but they want to keep him for as long as they can. So 
definitely very, very interesting that, uh, you know, Bogert mentioned that number. Uh, it definitely is higher than what previously was mentioned by Atlanta United for Almada. Uh, of course, Almada in the offseason as well has mentioned, yeah, he's ready to go to Europe. He's, uh, you know, he wants to go to a Champions League club. He wants to, uh, you know, play in the biggest competitions. And, well, I mean, you know, that might be seem like a bit of a, uh, you know, uh, at a, maybe not crossroads, but I, I don't really know what the look, word I'm looking for, but uh, essentially there's a difference of opinion. And yeah, I mean, Almada, if he uh, fetches 30 million, I mean, I think would be a fantastic fee for LA United, but should we upset the player, potentially, uh, you know, make him down tools? I don't, I don't know if he put up a stink like that, but yeah, what are your thoughts after hearing this bit of, uh, you know, report? Uh, I mean, I think it sounds fine to look for 30. Um, I think he's, I mean, consider this, you know, in Europe with the top teams, 30 million is not a lot of money. So us asking for that maybe sounds like a lot in the MLS, but it's really not. Um, so 30 million looking for like a backup 10 with promise and that can develop. I don't think is that ridiculous for Europe. Um, I think it's fairly reasonable. Um, you know, prove me wrong on that. You know, post what you want about it. Maybe there's some things that make me consider changing my opinion on that. But I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, and I would think that Tiago would look at that and say, yeah, I am worth that much. I, I think that that is a good appraisal of my abilities. Um, and I think that helps him if Atlanta can get that type of you know transfer fee um you know it just looks better for him you know he has a number a baseline number then to go on to bigger clubs in the future to say like you know i got 30 from here let's go 60 for there or something like that um he keeps going up and up and up which i think is very much possible with him um so yeah i think that that makes sense to me now what you said about him you know perhaps growing sour on that uh him wanting to leave immediately and we're not letting him that is something that is a bit of a concern um i hope i mean i remember in the early days when tiago got here there's some debate about whether or not he's a bit of a prima donna and is looking past atlanta um but that he seems to have grown quite a bit since then i think winning the world cup probably helped mature him a good amount um i think that he isn't you know uh I don't think he is that kind of person right now to be like, you know, I'm going to get sour and, you know, not play well or or stink up the locker room or things like that. I don't think he's going to do that. Um, I think that he understands that this is business and that it makes sense. And it's in his best interest to do this the way Atlanta United is seeking to do it. Um, now, if things, you know, in the next season, things are looking similar to this season in terms of his prospects. That's going to be worrying, and I think that's going to make him worried. I think Atlanta is just going to have to do what makes sense for the player and for us financially, too, is to lower the transfer fee request. So um, we'll see um, if European teams just don't think he's worth that and aren't going to pay it. Then I mean, it, it is what it is. We're not going to, you know, force them to pay something they're not wanting to pay. So mm -hmm. hopefully Tiago gets MVP this year, shows out, dominates the league. And then everyone looks and says that 30 million is definitely worth it and we'll pull the trigger. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is where uh, Togo Mata, I mean, what uh, he brings to this club is immense. And though uh, it is this, it's like, you know, you have uh, the likes of, say, Alexis McAllister, who was sold for 35 million to Liverpool from Brighton. Uh, who played a lot of the World Cup for Argentina uh, and showed out, really. Uh, but, you know, like I mentioned on other episodes, that's, you know, $30 million for a playmaker like Thiago Amada, who's a bit different from McAllister, uh, it is definitely, I think, you know, very interesting. And, uh, you know, it would be pretty cheap, I would say, for a, uh, you know, a person that is a creator, a player that... You know, can make a, lo a lot of things happen, pull a lot of strings for you. Uh, and, you know, in the European game, yeah, like 30 million for a creator is really pretty good. 
but you know the January window are teams a little too strapped with FFP with uh, they would have to have some outgoing probably to bring some players in uh, of that type of transfer fee uh, yeah I mean basically like you're saying we may have to lower our fee if uh you know almada does want to leave but uh you know if he doesn't want to leave yeah we keep him i mean it's you know we we are in the the driver's seat on this uh this whole uh situation so you know that that definitely isn't um uh, the worst thing at least club wise to keep tiago almada like oh my god we gotta keep tiago almada as long as he's you know he behaves it's fine but uh, but th I think there is a, a level of this where, uh, you know, Almada, I mean, is he, is he the, uh, is he, I mean, obviously he's not the answer long term. And so, you know, do we need to figure out something anyway, uh, and not be kind of short sighted here? Uh, I think there, there is a, maybe a, an argument for that. That uh, you know, maybe we need to figure that out sooner than later, so that we're not uh, beholden to that type of thing. But you also saw the likes of Columbus Crew really figure that out really quickly in one transfer window, uh, yeah. with you know selling Zolari in it and then bringing in Diego Rossi. So you know, uh, hopefully we can do something like that. But you know that uh, that will remain to be seen. But uh, yeah, so last bit of news is the big one. Miles Robinson has signed for FC Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, he was rumored to have gone there over the winter break uh, to visit. He posted some things uh, on him, uh, pretty much really uh, thinking over, reflecting uh, in his IG stories, and he made his decision uh, that, yes, he will be going to a side that won the Supporter Shield, but also, I think probably maybe importantly, is playing in the Champions League, and uh, yeah, you know he uh, he signed through 2024 with an option for 2025. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know him at his age, 26. I mean, he's. I think we would have all preferred him to go to a European side, uh, but I think th it makes a little bit of sense maybe why he, uh, if he didn't see the offers that maybe he wanted. Uh, you know, from the likes of a PSV Eindhoven, that's, you know, maybe up your value a little bit because, yes, by all metrics and stats, he had a down year last year. Uh, you know, it, it is, you kind of see that, like uh, with Thiago Amato, that conversation, right? Maybe he might down tools. Some suggested that, uh, some fans anyway, suggested that Robinson down tooled uh, this past season. And, uh, you know, whether he did or didn't, I mean, he is the last uh, pretty much piece from the original 2017 team uh, to have left Atlanta United. Uh, and I mean, you know, a player that was on the club uh, from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, he was there for the 2018 uh, MLS Cup and also uh, a big cog in the U.S. Open Cup and the Campionos Cup, of course. I mean, yeah, a big, big uh, miss. And, I mean, you did mention that Miles Robinson may be, like, captain material. I disagree with uh, the captain material bit because I don't, I don't, I don't really see the leadership in him. Uh, but he definitely was a leader by example in some senses. Has uh, he ever captain Lady United? I think a, a, once or twice. Yeah, I but. think that's where I'm getting that from. Right, right. Got you. And yeah, I mean, it's just uh, Robinson in general, um, you know, it seemed like, yeah, he, he's still maturing. He's still, you know, kind of figuring out and growing into his skin a bit uh, in terms of, I think, off the field, uh, maybe um, in terms of kind of on field leadership as well. It just didn't really seem like maybe it was quite there in that respect. So I think, you know, Robinson, big miss talent wise. Uh, you know, maybe with the newcomers, we maybe get a little bit of the int intangibles that maybe we were uh, possibly lacking with Miles Robinson. But uh, yeah, definitely still, though. I mean, club legend, really, at this point. And, uh, you know, really sad to see him go. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's tough seeing a player like that legend going to 
a interconference rival, especially one of the best ones in the league. Um, it's tough when you have to go and play against them again. Um, you know, and of course, it seems like when you are an ex Land United alumni, you show out against Land the next time you play them. So hopefully that's not the case. He doesn't score like a header off of a set piece or something. But, um, you know, as we say with all these players, we wish them luck, except for when they're playing Atlanta. So good luck to him. Um, it's, it'll be interesting to see how FC Cincinnati does in the Champions League. That is good. You know, he, Miles Robinson getting back into the Champions League. They show out there. Um, that could definitely up his value. That would be really cool to see. Um, hopefully he does well with the, uh, you know, the United States men's national team. He's basically like kind of almost the captain of that um, because of he's like one of the few players that are that often goes on to the senior team, uh, like the A team or, or what have you. Um, that is on this this camp um, with a lot of the MLS players. Um, so hopefully he does well there. Hopefully he does well internationally as well so um yeah i mean it's tough seeing him in another you want him to go to europe but maybe this is a bridge year he needs who knows um what's going through his mind um i i'm sure it's still on his radar to go to europe and his ultimate goal um maybe he just needs a bridge year so we'll see yeah, and I think that's a great point, is that maybe it is a bridge year. Uh, it is something that, yeah, he just needed to uh, up his value. But, uh, yeah, he uh, he did say a goodbye post uh, for Atlanta, and uh, he said, ATL, man, where do I begin? I love the city. The city is beautiful in all senses of the world. Uh, word. It has forced me to learn, adapt, grow, conquer my fears, and learn again. Atlanta is filled with talented, inspiring, powerful, loving individuals, and I'm truly grateful for all of those who I've crossed paths with. You have helped me become the man I am today. I could go on forever telling stories about what makes this city so amazing in my eyes, but I can save that for another time. But trust me when I say that I have uh, made plenty of amazing memories here. Only love and appreciation goes to the whole Atlanta United organization and the beloved fans. That being said, it's time to say peace. For now, I will see you all later. One love as always. So, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, a, a good heartfelt message, uh, you know, almost obligatory to a sense. But it is like, yeah, you know, there, there is, uh, it begs the question. Why do you leave? Why do you go to another club in MLS? Uh, you know, but like I mentioned maybe before, that Champions League, uh, which he has not played in for some time now, uh, that maybe is kind of a factor. Um, you know, he maybe isn't wasn't getting that offer in Europe. So you know, next best thing, play for the the team that uh, you know did the best in the league, uh, at least in the regular season. But yeah. I mean, and, and yeah. also, I mean, I didn't, it's hard to imagine FCC getting better, but yeah. I think with the addition of miles, they are, yeah. they're getting an incredible, um, you know, like best 11 style defender in MLS. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, that's just scary to think about FCC being even better than last year. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's not a prospect I'm totally keen on. Ohio, why are why is Ohio so scary in terms of soccer these days? I don't get it. It it shouldn't be the case, but for whatever reason, it seems to be. So hopefully Atlanta can be scary again next season. But damn, man, freaking Ohio! Yeah, we're losing a lot of players to Ohio. It's a, or at least you know, uh, maybe eventually getting there. But uh, yeah, you know, like Ohio doesn't have the best reputation, you know, in uh, a lot of senses. But uh, yeah, you know, sports wise, they have the best team in the league. Yeah. And the MLS Cup champions in the same state. Yeah, it's uh, it's bananas, and uh, so you know Ohio making a comeback, uh, and it's not LeBron that's making uh, the the moves and the waves there. That's that's wild, but uh, it is that. I mean, Miles Robinson, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, though, like uh, with players with injuries, uh, you know, some some uh, maybe hypothesized that. Robinson, because of his injury right before the World Cup, you know, uh, he is maybe wanting to avoid that type of scenario where, you know, he wants to up his value and he wants to do it 
possibly on grass who knows i don't yeah. know but uh you know <laughs> running away from turf as fast as he can exactly so you know we'll probably see plenty of him in our backyard in uh fayetteville and uh you know where the u.s men's national team is going to be uh training and you know uh so yeah it probably won't be the last of miles robinson uh, at least uh you know uh you know in terms of uh mls anyway either so uh, definitely, yeah. yeah, a big miss. And, and tr drop your favorite Miles Robinson stories and memories, or if you met him, uh, you know what you experienced with him um, in the comments, because he's a club legend, yeah. and uh, we'll miss him. Yeah, for sure. So uh, yes, Miles Robinson. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, salute to you, and uh, you know, I, I'd be remiss not to do the here's to you, Miles Robinson. <laughs> So and I think just to, add, to start things off with that, I think my favorite moment was not in, in the Atlanta United jersey. Miles Robinson lifting us above Mexico. And I think it was either in the Nations League or it was the Gold Cup. I forget which one. But man, that was that was amazing. That header he put in on the set piece. That was great. Um, and I'll always remember that as a legendary United States men's national team moment and a very proud Atlanta United moment, too. Yeah. I mean, he was stoked. And, uh, I mean, you know, a, a recent memory one for Miles Robinson is him scoring that equalizer against Columbus Crew uh, at home uh, to pretty much steal one at the death. Uh, and yeah, you know, his expression is just uh, tells the entire tale where he's uh, incredulous and he's just like, did that just happen? Yes, we, uh, you know, we totally stole a point here. But yeah, uh, definitely lots of other memories as well that uh, yeah he's been a part of, uh, and I think yeah I mean you know that that U.S. Open Cup like he possibly was our best player that night. I think he uh, you know he really uh, was able to to lock it down, and that uh, that definitely you know Joseph Martinez he pointed it out in the celebrations that uh, yeah MVP, and uh, you know definitely. Miles that was a nervy game. That yeah. was a very nervy game, and he held very it. Very much was, exactly. So, yeah, definitely a lot of memories with Miles Robinson. But, uh, yeah, definitely here's to you. So uh, <clears throat> that is the news and the entire episode pretty much, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day, apropos, uh, is since Miles Robinson is leaving or has left, who's the best player to have come out of the 2017-2018 original team, not named Miggy and Joseph. Who do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Who do you think, uh, just uh, hearing that question, Michael? Who do I think is the best player to come out of 2017 and 18 team? Mm -hmm. That's not Miggy and not Joseph. Yeah. <sighs> very tough, very, very yeah, tough. Yeah, <laughs> that is tough. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd have yeah. to think about it. Yeah. It Miles might be Miles. Is definitely Miles. A mm -hmm. Miles is definitely up there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably feel safe saying Miles. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, probably Miles, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, because you got, you got, you got maybe shouts for some other players. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a Julian Gressel, um, you know, maybe a, um, Man, it's yeah because i go back and forth with russell and miles but i just think miles is yeah. you know in his Longevity. position he's just better yeah, um true you know uh, you know just like he's in the top like one percent of mm -hmm. uh defenders in like mls whereas gressel's good but i don't think he's in the top one percent of you know like full backs or something or wing backs so right. um you know i think i mean obviously gressel's good and it's a it's you know close between the two but i think miles edges them out yeah but yeah what do you guys think let us know in the comments below but that is it that's the episode there and there remember to like share comment and subscribe i've been aj that's been michael thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video <laughs>